Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. Thanks for joining me today. A bit over a year ago, I set out to build an expedition style camper trailer similar to a Patriot N1 or the DOT from Drifter, but at a way more affordable price point because I would only use it a few times a year for my family camping trips. So, one and a half years later, let's have a look whether I succeeded with what is behind me here. Before we get into the Signature Deluxe 2, let me give you a little background information about my camper trailer history. We purchased our first soft floor camper trailer in 2012 for our family camping trips. After a lot of research, we settled on a great Aussie camper, Yango. We owned this trailer for a few years and did like it. However, I found it was too much effort setting up, especially for touring or short weekend trips. So I sold it. I have been following the rise of expedition style trailers in the market, which shifted focus from accommodation to storage like the Drifter DOT, Mission, Patriot, and I really like the concept. A friend of mine used to import and sell the South African made Mission Camper trailers and I ended up buying one. While I liked the overall concept, after the first and only three week trip with the Mission, we sold it again as it had some significant shortcomings for our use. Fast forward three years and I was on the lookout for a trailer again. As with two teenage kids and my wife, the cruise alone meant we needed to leave too many things at home on the family camping trips. Expedition style trailers like the Patriot can cost up to 80k and I did not want to have such an amount of money tied up in a trailer used only for a few times a year. So I looked around and found the Signature Deluxe 2 which had an outlet around the corner from my place. While the trailer is imported from China, Signature does the final assembly and fit out here in Australia and looking at the trailer in their showroom I was pretty impressed. The price range, just under 20k, was more realistic for my use and I decided to purchase one and then make a few upgrades to have a similar functionality to a Patriot but for a significantly lower price. Let's have a look how I went. Let's start with what criteria the camper trailer has to fulfill for my purposes. Fast setup and pack down, off-road capable, reasonably light, good storage facilities and kitchen, reasonable suspension, options for good shade, easily modifiable and a decent build quality and price for my usage. Let me also show you the specs of the camper trailer. I did not include any of the electrical specs because I made a dedicated video about my electrical setup and I changed pretty much everything. I purchased my Signature Deluxe in September 2020 and Signature since has made quite a few changes to the electrical fit out and components. So let's start with how the trailer tows. My fairly heavy Toyota Land Cruiser 105 with a stock 1HD FTE engine tows the trailer without any issues but will not break any speed records. The trailer tows very well with a loaded weight of around 1.4 ton. The Dometson shocks and King Springs do a pretty good job on bumpy gravel roads and feel safe and controlled on the road. I need to remind myself that I'm towing most of the time. While so far, I make my challenging remote touring trips without a trailer, I definitely would be comfortable taking the signature through the Simpson Desert by any of the standard lines. However, I prefer desert trips without a trailer if possible. The 100 kg tow ball weight makes the trailer relatively easy to hitch and to move in the driveway. Given the smaller size, you actually can find parking in town and it is easy to maneuver and put into tight spots, which I have to do every time because the entry to our driveway is pretty tight. So as a conclusion, the trailer tows as expected and I like it. So let's have a look at the trailer setup and how we came with it. At this stage we opted against the rooftop tent for a few reasons. With four people we still would need bedding for two people and I find most rooftop tents mattresses quite uncomfortable. Also in many rooftop tents you can't leave all the bedding inside and if you pack in when wet you can end up with a damp mattress. Not to mention that some of the hardtop rooftop tents which I would consider cost around 5k. Our existing setup takes us around 15 minutes to set up 
and consists of a snow peak hexa tarp and underneath we have two stretchers and two swags. The trailer setup itself, once it's level, takes around 5 to 10 minutes. And that consists mainly of setting up the super pack awning as well as our smaller second awning and putting the kitchen out. Packing back in takes a little bit longer, but to be honest, around 45 minutes, uh, given that we had everything out from chairs, additional tables and so on, is probably an average pack-in time, which includes cleaning the kitchen and so on, and the kids helping a little bit and packing in their bedding. Mind you, if we have a quick overnighter, we don't put the awnings up and get all the stuff out. We could be setting up for a sleepover in 15 minutes and pack in in around 20 minutes. Initially, I thought the setup would be too cumbersome and I may put a rooftop tent on, but so far I love it as it is and don't see a need for it. Next to the storage capacity, one big reason to get a camper trailer again was that my lovely wife hated not to have a kitchen set up when camping. Mind you, due to COVID, lousy weather or work, she has not managed to get out with us so far. The Deluxe 2 has a stainless steel slide-out kitchen with a Dometic two-burner stove, kitchen sink and tap and a foldable shelf. I found that you need to secure the foldable shelf with a bungee cord, otherwise the wind gust can flip it over. The kitchen is easily deployed and has a quick setup by a net gas fitting as well as stainless needle plugs for the water. Both hoses remain connected to the sink and are stored underneath. So even on the side of the road you could brew a coffee within a few minutes. The original water tap wasted water every time opening and closing. It also became hard to open after a short while. So I replaced it with a regular foldable fixture from eBay and that was a worthwhile improvement. I have to be honest here, while the kitchen was not high on my priority list, I have to come to appreciate it as it makes whipping up dinner or brekkie for me and the kids so much easier. While the kitchen is functional, I would love to see a bit more pressure coming out of the gas jets and a built-in foldable windshield would be also handy. And I would like to see the cutlery drawer opening forward, not to the side. Because at present you need to empty and push in the bench extension whenever you want to access a drawer. And that has become a bit annoying. What so Kaylin, what do you reckon? I reckon my top two favorite things about this camper trailer yeah. is the sink. This. Yeah, can we which leave you that? Lift up to turn yeah. on the water, and yeah. there's a pipe which you can leave to your bucket, yeah. as well as storage over here. Yeah. And a hot plate, very neat. Yeah. Built into the camper trail. So as you can see, even the kids approve of the kitchen, and while it is a good kitchen with a few small changes, it could be a perfect kitchen. And maybe Signature takes some of my suggestions on board. So one of the first things I added to the camper trailer was a fridge. This is the Bushman fridge, the SC35-52. Carrying an additional fridge freezer is one of the many benefits of a camper trailer. The Signature Deluxe 2 has a large fridge slider at the rear of the trailer, which fits an up to 75 liter fridge freezer. The fridge compartment has an Anderson and a cigarette lighter plug, as well as an interior light. Given I had great experience with my Bushman SC35 fridge freezer, which I purchased 10 years ago and has been with me ever since. I contacted Bushman and they were kind enough to provide me with a second one for my camper trailer. The Bushman can be size adjusted with an extended collar and deep lid to 52 liter version, which fits perfectly height wise, but still leaves some storage space behind and next to the fridge. With the double fridge setup, I usually run the Bushman in the car as a freezer and the one in the camper trailer as a fridge. Running the Bushman as a freezer will keep everything frozen even at above 40 degrees outside temperature. I tested that many times on my desert trips. The refrigerator also has one of the lowest energy consumptions of similar sized fridges, which makes it suitable for more extended stays. Given I like and tested the Bushman for the past 10 years, and this one was for free, it was a no-brainer for me to put that in the camper trailer, especially as it fits perfectly into the compartment. Another reason why I liked and bought the Signature Deluxe 2 was the ample amount of storage it offers. While I try to travel reasonably light on regular trips, on family camping trips, carrying more gear and toys is excellent. Especially if you already have four people in the car. On top of the trailer we have the roof cage with three small storage compartments on each side, 
which houses my tarps, chainsaw fuel, firewood and so on. In the middle is a big storage compartment and with the doors removed you can store kayaks or pedal boards if you wish. However, I have it closed and locked as it houses my solar panels, chairs, hexatarp and so on. On top of the roof cage I have an ARB roof bag which houses the swags and stretchers. But unfortunately it's not waterproofed either. I really wish that uh, the top compartment would be enclosed I have to say. That would be way better for mine. Maybe one corner box uh, open so you can put wet stuff in there. But the main thing enclosed would be much better in my book. I plan to address it with the custom canvas cover that hopefully keeps the gear inside dry. The main body of the trailer has eight lockable storage compartments, four of them with fold down doors, which also act as tables. Tip, the inside of the doors are stainless steel, so you want an awning above it if you keep them open in the sun as they otherwise get very hot. Inside the middle compartments is one drawer each. Unfortunately, they don't have a locking mechanism when open. This is one of the little things. Unless the trailer is 100% leveled, which it isn't, these come out until you have it locked down so it would be nice if that would lock in here if you have a little hinge here instead of every time having to do this and also you always got to watch it that this is not like this otherwise it will contact so it needs to be up yeah, what you can't see behind all of this that's the dcs uh, battery Behind this is the Victron Multi and yeah, my electrical setup, which I explain later. It's all my first aid kit always have in the trailer. And that's a survival solution a burns kit. That is a survival solution first aid trauma kit and the survival first aid snake bite kit. Yeah, I think got to have that in every camper trailer or every car. I've got the same kit in the car. Yeah, and then just some other knickknacks, you know. The trailer also has a generously sized lockable toolbox on the drawbar. Unfortunately, that came without light or any shelving. The toolbox lid is the best way to get on top of the cage, so it would have been great to have a step and some checker plate aluminium on top of the toolbox to make access easier. You have provisions for three 20 liter jerry cans on the left of the toolbox and on the right is the gas bottle. Yeah, I'm overall I'm super happy with the storage capacity and to be honest I still have space to spare which I really love. For our type of setup, easily accessible and sufficient awning space is super important, as it is our living room and kitchen and protects from sun or rain. At the time of purchase, I wasn't overly impressed with the Toy Tough 270 awning, but admittedly it was a prototype then. Given that I had already tested the Australian made Super Pack awning on my car for two years and was very happy with them, I contacted Super Pack and they provided me with the Rapid Wing 6 Deluxe, which is one of the biggest 270 degree awnings I have seen. It's not freestanding, but to be honest, I got a little put off freestanding awnings because I ended up attaching poles anyway, as I hated to get up in the middle of the night to secure the awning if the wind picked up. So I had the awning out to dry, and really without much forewarning, we had air, some super shitty weather and clouds moving in very low. And I sprinted back, but already too late. So that's the end of the awning, unfortunately. So a really good way to test now how sealed the trailer really is. Um, put a tarp on top of it, but we'll see where there's any water ingress here now. Seems like with that awning and so on, we can leave the kitchen out, which is good. As you can see, we had plenty of time to test how rainproofed our setup and the camper trailer is. I have to say it worked better than expected because it kept the kitchen dry due to the awning cover which folds backwards and prevents rain entry from the back. I also have the extended curtain for the end panel which works perfectly to keep the rear area and the fridge dry and prevent rain blowing. Here are a few more reasons why I like the Superpack awnings. 
It's Australian made, it uses Australian canvas. The included unique Super Pack packs are probably the best value for money packs around. Super Pack has spare parts for everything and you can get accessories like the sidewalls and I would recommend always carrying two of them as you can create a nice protected nook even with heavy wind and rain. I also have a dedicated review of the Rapid Wing 6 Deluxe on my channel please check it out. On the opposite side of the kitchen I currently have a cheap 2x4x2x4 awning which I still had somewhere in the garage but I plan to exchange this for a super pack 180 degree awning which then would provide me nearly all round cover. When I purchased the Signature Deluxe 2 I knew that the electrical setup was its Achilles heel. In all fairness this is often the case in caravans and camper trailers even if double or triple the price. I have to give a big shout out here to Joe and John from JS Auto Electrics in Annan Grove. Joe is my auto electrician for the past four years and he rewired 90% of the trailer as the wiring was not really up to scratch and also not suitable for live PO4. He also installed all the electrical extras. I made an in-depth video about all the electrical modification. Please check that out if you're interested. So I will only go briefly over it here. The camper came with two super cheap Chinese crystal LED batteries and I knew I wanted a live PO4 setup to easily charge all my camera gear and drones. I definitely wanted to run a bigger inverter simply to give me options to run other appliances if I choose to do so. Given I had a good experience with two 100 amp hours DCS Live PO4 batteries under the bonnet of my Land Cruiser for over two years at the time, I contacted DCS and they offered me a 150 amp hour ultra high performance lithium battery which is IP67 to test. After more than a year of use the setup has proven to work exactly as expected and I'm very happy with it. The DCS 150 amp hour Live PO4 has a max charge current of 150 amp and a max discharge current of 250 amp which allows me to easily run the Victron Multi Plus 1600. Live PO4 has many benefits, among them long life expectancy, very high usable energy to weight ratio, fast charging and a pretty constant voltage above 12.8 volt for my drone equipment. Charging the battery is done by a Red Arc BCDC 1250D which has a built-in MPPT solar controller to allow charging via my portable solar panels or the car. I also made a dedicated review why I like the Red Arc BCDC chargers. Check it out if you like. I carry a Red Arc 200 watt SPFP 1200 and a Vic Off-Road 300 watt panel as my foldable solar panels. I connect them via double Anderson plug in parallel. The Red Arc panel is way more expensive but it's much better made, has better legs so it's easier to position towards the sun and provides around 1 amp more output even though it's supposedly 100 watts smaller. So the Vic Off-Road panel, not too bad actually but it gives around an amp less than the Red Arc. Uh, both solar panels together, now 17, uh, before had 21 amp, not bad. I contacted Vic Off Road who provided me the panel for review purposes and I'm glad to say they discontinued that panel because it didn't meet the specs. So credit to them for acting up on that. A Victron battery protects provides low voltage protection for the Live PO4 battery. I also have a Victron BVM 712 uh, which is a battery monitor and that is very handy. That's here in this compartment. It also has Bluetooth so I can always see from my app what my solar is doing and uh, the battery status and so on. So very handy. Joe added a few additional fuse switches for auxiliary stuff and I replaced a less than average stock radio. One of the new switches is used to switch on and off the light I installed in the toolbox. As one of the utility lights I fitted a laser 25 watt utility and what I really like it comes with a yellow uh, cover and that attracts a few less bugs. So if I need extra light I can switch that on. The signature also comes with four lights all around which I think it's pretty good. You can switch them on and off from the outside. The Victron Multi Plus is also a 220 volt charger, so Joe organized a 220 volt Sparky to install a waterproofed external power plug 
to keep the trailer charged when stationary. I also installed a Hummingbird digital GPS odometer, which makes keeping track of service intervals and mileage of the trailer a breeze. There are also a few theft protection measures installed in the trailer. I always have a GME TX6160 5W UHF radio, which I use in the trailer, as well as a set of bright yellow TX6160 for the kids. Because I charge so many devices, I often also carry the Gold Zero Yeti 200, which means I can charge or run stuff even away from the trailer without an issue. There are also multiple 12 volt cigarette lighter plugs around the trailer. However, the location for the two on the rear is not well chosen because the plug angles downwards and if you get water in there, it will just stay there. Overall, the original electrical setup and wiring on the trailer was the biggest shortcoming, but was something I somewhat anticipated. I heard that Signature since has improved the wiring and setup. I'm now 100% happy with my electrical setup and really there is nothing I like to change. Yeah, to be honest, I chose the Mac Hitch because I had an earlier version on my first camper trailer and that worked brilliantly. However, the new version I don't think is really that off-road compatible. It is very, very easy to hitch and unhitch if you are on flat ground. However, if you're on a slight angle, if the car is lower than the trailer, I spent considerable time trying to hitch back on and got really annoyed. I have to say the Mac Hitch is a bit of a pain, it's a little bit uneven and we're mucking around now here and the pin just won't come down, um, it's really uh, frustrating. We are finally in after Dave and everyone pushing from the back, yeah, that uh, my old Mac Hitch had a different mechanism and I never had that issue with this. I do not think I would get the Mac Hitch again, I have to say. If you really go off-road, if you ever have to re unhitch uh, uh, or rehitch, you know, for recovery or something, that may be an absolute pain in the butt. So, yeah, sorry Mac Hitch, I loved your old one, but that new one, um, unless you know you stay on even straight ground, then it's brilliant. But for really off-road, undulated terrain, mm, no. Suspension-wise, my trailer has independent suspension with twin Dominson shocks and King Springs. I can't complain about the ride, but I have not done any extended long-range touring over a lot of corrugations with the trailer. Signature has since changed the suspension to twin Lovell shocks. The only issue I had was losing the shackles which hold the suspension retainer chains. Shackle gone! So I contacted Signature. And today in the post, I received this. So obviously they can't come loose, much better design. So great, gonna fit them now. The Signature Deluxe 2 has a 111 liter water tank that sits underneath towards the front of the trailer, which is pretty good for the balance of the trailer. The tank is protected with a checker plate stone guard and has a water outlet on the tank itself, one on the sink and an additional outlet on the drawbar. I really like the drawbar outlet. I purchased a shower hose with a shower head, which is brilliant for cleanups or even a quick shower. There also is a manual, a little bit outdated water gauge tucked away on top of the control panel. Overall, 110 liter is sufficient for our family camping trips and I have not run out of water yet. Yeah, a few bits and pieces which didn't fit anywhere else. The trailer comes with alloy wheels and a Chinese good ride mud terrain tire. The jockey wheel is an ARC XO750 off-road wheel. The trailer has a tow hitch at the rear as well as two recovery points. One thing I personally don't like is these toy tough insignia uh, around the roof cage. I think that's a, that's a sub-brand of Signature. They, they name their awnings and so on, toy tough. Um, Maybe just me, but I find that name horrible. I think 90% of toys you buy nowadays is cheap plastic crap and toy tough. Yeah, that name for me doesn't do it at all. So I definitely would prefer 
not having that up there. But look, it is what it is. And that may be just me. You may like that name. So the Signature Deluxe 2 is a Chinese made camper trailer. However, they are assembled here in Australia. The electrical stuff is done here in Australia and they do create Australian jobs because they employ people here in their factory in Thornley. Obviously, ideally, I would love to have a fully Australian made camper trailer again, but price wise, it is just not in my budget for my purpose. So what is my conclusion? Did I achieve my goal of creating an expedition style trailer similar to a Patriot N1 for significantly less? To be honest, I'm more than pleased with the outcome and have 100% achieved what I set out to do. The trailer so far does exactly what I wanted to do and has provided a perfect base camp with shelter, kitchen, water, batteries and it's carrying all of our gear. Price wise it was significantly cheaper than a Patriot N1 and with a better and more powerful electrical and battery setup. The Signature also has more space than N1. We still will see the long term reliability but given I know someone who returned an 80k Patriot after a few months because he had only problems I think I will be safe. So guys what do you think? Is this a viable alternative to one of the more expensive expedition style trailers? For me it certainly is. And this brings me to the end of the review. So if you enjoy my videos please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and if you can maybe even consider becoming one of my Patreon supporters and with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month you can really help me make these videos. You also have a few extra perks. You can get direct access and can ask me questions via the Patreon platform. You get early access to my videos. And from time to time, I give goodies away to my Patreon supporters. Stay well, and I hope to see you along the tracks.